Hello fellow Binding Blade gamers, and welcome back to my armor solo, or armors only, whatever you want to call it. In this one we take on chapter 12x, which is pretty easy. It's not difficult. It's just uh, kind of tedious because there are tons of chests, and uh, fog of war, and also the poison pillar things that shoot out, though those actually aren't that bad. They're probably one of the easiest map hazards to deal with. Not annoying. Not that annoying. But yeah, like usual, we're splitting up the gang between uh, Wendy and Barth and Boars. Just because uh, there are three thieves to deal with, two of them are on opposite sides pretty much. We got unlucky with Wendy missing. A thief, but it's fine, because you'll just go south, I think. Which ultimately isn't a big deal. We brought Ray this map just so I could get his staff rank up a little. I don't get to heal with him a ton, besides uh, near the end of the map where all we have to do is get chests. Oh no, not an antitoxin, the most valuable item of all time. This map has a few elixirs, a bunch of antitoxins, a lockpick, a chest key, a red gem, and a white gem. You typically want to get the white gem, which you're basically guaranteed to, unless you do weak stuff like steal from the thieves and then leave them all alive. Then maybe they'll steal the white gem, but typically if you're playing normally, there's never a chance of losing out on the white gem. Because there are only three thieves, there are no uh, reinforcements on this map, thankfully. It'd be really tedious if they were. There are not. Yeah, this map just has a ton of brigands. And a couple sword users. An archer, too. That's pretty much it. The boss is a berserker. We've dealt with berserkers countless times by now. They do nothing to boards. Even if they have like 20 strength, they're still never gonna hit him. Never gonna crit him. Cause he has absurd luck. And, uh, never gonna do anything to him, really. Wars is just God, as you all know. Next chapter, I'm still unsure if I'm going to attempt getting the Knight's Crest early or not. I'll probably try and make a feasible strategy for getting it, but really, I'm not sure if it'll be that doable. We'll find out. I guess we'll find out. Yeah, it's really this map is just slowly progressing, getting ambushed from the fog, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> Not a lot of strategy required for this map, just know where the one scary fog enemy is, which is the druid. There's a druid sort of close to the boss. He will move because he has a clips, so he'll move towards you, use it, move towards you, use it, and then suddenly he's not in his starting position anymore, but you don't know that because he has a... he has a clips. And also Physic, though. I haven't seen him use Physic. So I don't know if he doesn't have Healer AI, but... Because you'd think he'd Physic this Thief this turn, but no. Nope. Instead he opts to Eclipse. Yeah, here I just want to get the elixirs off him, so we box him in. Unlike FE7 and FE8 thieves, thieves in FE6 will never attack on their turn. All they want to do is run away. They'll also never steal from you. It was weird. Though, I'm kind of thankful, because enemies that steal from you are super annoying. Like that one, uh, Fog of War map in Thracia with the brigands who have steel. They'll just steal from you. It's very obnoxious, but... 
Oh well. Hey, really, this is just free EXP for Astor. Which, I mean, isn't the most important. It's not like Astor needs EXP to be good. It's not like he even gets a good level up here, he gets HP skill, right? Yeah. I guess maybe the one point of HP will matter and prevent something from one-shotting him. Because at this point in the game, nothing does one-shot him, but that'll probably change. Probably. I'm not excited for the next couple maps. Gonna be headaches. This map almost was a headache, because I had to redo an attempt near the end because of the dumb druid being in a weird spot. I couldn't see him, and then he uh, just one-shot Florine. And yeah, it's a little unfortunate, but not a huge deal. At this point, the map's basically over. There's what, like, two enemies near the boss that don't move, the boss, and then a brigand in the bottom right can't hit anything, and the archer who just died. Really, the most annoying part of this map is getting all the chests. Because your deployment is only eight, seven, if we're not including Roy. And then I have to field my armors, which are the combat units, so that leaves me with three available spots. Then I want to field... Wait, no, it leaves me with four. I'm stupid. But then I want to field two healers, one for each group, so that leaves me with two. And then I want to field Elfen, because Bard. So then I'm just left with one spot for a thief. So it makes getting the treasure take, like, 20 turns. It's really annoying. But yeah, the boss, typically he'd be scary, but... 16 speed, 20 strength. Not gonna cut it against Boris. He's too bulky, too fast. Though I'm definitely not looking forward to when Boris stops doubling everything. That is gonna suck. <laughs> In fact, I think he already doesn't double this Myrmidon, which is really lame. He has like 19 speed or something. <clears throat> 19 or 20. Capped speed can only get you so far when you're a general, sadly. If only there are a way to break caps, but there are not. If... Here I just let Alfin get poisoned on purpose so that I can get heal the XP every turn. Since we do want Chlorine to get to warp rank, even if her magic is garbage, having an extra warper will definitely help. Red gem. For some reason in this game, it's 3,000, when in every other GBA game, it's 2,500. Weird, but whatever. But yeah, as you can see, this guy has single-digit hit against boars, single-digit crit against boars, and single-digit damage against boars, so he's all around not a threat at all. Despite having normally scary stats and being in a normally scary class, versus just like, nah, bruh. Thought. But you thought wrong. And then we get the stylish Iron Axe Triangle attack. And now all that's left to do is get the treasure. And spam heals on poisoned people. And spam bard so that Elfin gets levels. Because Elfin's stats don't matter a ton, but the more the more speed and luck he has, the less chance of death he has. If I ever have to rely on Elfin dodging. Which hopefully will never happen, because usually relying on a bard dodging should never really be a thing you do, but... Who knows, better safe than sorry, right? Yep, 
And there's the white gem, which is a lot of cash. Boots cash. Well, as long as we don't have to buy any more weapons until chapter 21 will be boots cash. I kind of doubt that though, but yeah. It is what it is. I doubt Ray will get higher than uh, these staves, but it's still nice to have a backup healer. Especially one that can take a hit like Ray can. Since 12-1 uh, Ray is actually pretty bulky for a heal bot. Bulkier than anybody else that I have healing. Though I don't doubt that a few things double him. Though a few things also double Alan and also double Saul and probably even double Clarine, so it's nothing new. Oh boy, a torch. Sure would have been nice to have that way earlier. I don't know why FE6 is kind of stingy with torches. Like, you can buy them in chapter... 9? And you get one in a chest here, and that's about it. And there might be a one or two other ones, but... Kinda it. It's kind of bizarre. You'd think torches would be more common, but nope. At least you get a torch staff, I guess. Boars being a concerned older brother, just like, uh... Just like, uh... I don't know. I don't know. Just like a lot of other concerned older brothers. Seteth. I mean, he has green hair like Seteth. But anyways, that concludes chapter 12x, so thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.